CCS Alumni and Friends Association, we are very excited to have you join us. This series brings UCCS faculty and staff to you in order to share the exciting work and research and things that are happening on campus. Previous sessions are housed on the UCCS alumni website for replay and watch your email and social media as the series continues this year and into next year. On to today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Lynn Vidler, the new Dean of the College of Letters, Arts and Sciences here at UCCS. Dean Vidler joined UCCS this summer, coming from the University of South Dakota where they were an Associate Dean. Dean Vidler will tell us more about their background in a bit. Hello, Dean Vidler. Hello, Joanna, thank you so much for having me. How are you today? Great, doing great. Great, well, I'm not gonna waste much time. We're going to hear a little bit more about your background later, but why don't we jump right in with the first question? Ready? All right. All, All right. right. Here we go. Can you kick us off, please, by giving us an inside look at the classroom this semester? And I know that continues to evolve. So can you walk us through what it's like being in a classroom this semester at UCCS? That's a great question. Um, so there's a lot of things that are the same and a lot of things that are different this semester. So for starters, we have about 20% uh, of our classes are actually fully face-to-face, -face, you know, in-person, regular classes. Um, I would say about another 20% have some kind of face-to-face -face component, right? So maybe a, the bulk of the class is remote, but then when there's a particular activity or lab or something that needs to happen, then it happens face-to-face -face with the, of course, face coverings and social distancing protocols and caps on the room capacities and all those sorts of things. So this, the things that are the same, of course, you know, students are getting a great education. We still have the same fantastic faculty. Uh, they are still covering the same material. Uh, and they are doing their best to engage their students as much as is possible. Um, so that that hasn't changed. Um, some of the things that I find that are different are really interesting. So uh, when you put limitations on things, it actually promotes creativity, right? People are trying to figure out creative ways to solve problems. And we've all seen that in our daily lives, right? You know, just when we uh, try to what, curbside pickup, you know, uh, of, of takeout food and, and all kinds of creative ways to, um, to protect each other. Uh, well, some of those things, um, the creative solutions that faculty have uh, implemented have really impressed me. So, um, you know, some of that is just in the basic kinds of course organization and delivery. People who have been teaching courses face to face for their whole careers are learning to figure out, um, you know, what kinds of tools and strategies, you know, work in a virtual environment. Um, for example, I mean, I think you know, I had uh, one faculty member talk about how useful the chat feature is in Teams and Zoom. Um, whereas, you know, students in a face to face class generally try to be respectful and quiet in a classroom with the chat feature, they can still be respectful and quiet, but also, you know, communicate with each other. They can ask questions and students actually respond to their peers questions um, in the chat feature. And, um, you know, it's actually, you know, more engaging rather than less engaging. Um, students are also uh, leveraging some of these these tools, Zoom and Teams and whatnot, um, to make their own study groups uh, because they, they connect with each other more quickly with the chat feature and that sort of thing. Um, and so they're and it's easy for them to easier for them to, to meet, especially since we're you know, mostly a commuter campus, right? So it's hard for harder for commuter students to, to build study groups. Now it's it's easy, right? Um, other creative solutions to things. I mean, I've seen incredible things happen uh, with live performances uh, that have been happening in, in VAPA, for example, uh, visual and performing arts, um, performances that are taking place outdoors, socially distanced, limited tickets, uh, taking advantage of the beautiful fall weather that, that we had this year. Uh, of course, all the kinds of symposia and lectures and, and events are all happening. They're all still happening 
um, whether they're academic or actually, you know, uh, sort of clubs and every everybody's still meeting. We're just doing it virtually. Um, another creative solution, you know, uh, labs, you know, labs are tricky because you want to do those in person, uh, but you only have so much equipment and the rooms only have a certain capacity. So we actually have faculty members double like just doing their labs twice. I mean, it's literally double the work to set it all up, clean it all up, sanitize everything and bring in the second group of students so that they can have that live in person lab experience. Um, so, you know, the other thing that's different is that, you know, we are all increasingly isolated and that's, you know, not just the students, it's also the faculty and the staff. Um, so, you know, the faculty and staff are really doing their best to, you know, provide some extra TLC, right? Uh, the university itself has really worked to adjust policies and procedures on deadlines and pass fail, uh, extending the tenure clock, things like that. Um, so, uh, and, and, you know, trying to, you know, keep that social engagement happening uh, to, to keep our mental health and well being um, uh, as, as, as healthy as we can be. Besides being a new dean, you must also be very inspired by the students and faculty and staff in your college. I mean, the, what you're writing yeah. is a lot of care and attention to the education. Absolutely. And, and also, you know, care and attention to the students and also care and attention to the college itself and really still trying to move forward with some of the initiatives, you know, administrative initiatives, curricular initiatives, research initiatives at the, at the college uh, level as well. And so I, I've just been really overwhelmed with uh, the amazing faculty and staff in LAS. Well, before I go to question two, I want to remind those of you who are watching that uh, Dean Fiddler will take a few questions at the end. I'm going to make sure we leave a little bit of time. So get your questions ready, put them in the chat, and uh, I'll relay them to them to answer. All right, question number two, you ready? Yep. All right, could you talk a little bit about the importance of the experiences outside of the classroom and how LAS students in your college can meet um, the needs of alumni who may run businesses and nonprofits and agencies. And we know that many, many of our alumni remain in the Colorado Springs community. Uh, so talk about those experiences outside the classroom for students in your college, please. This is a great, great question. Um, so, you know, obviously classroom experiences are really important because they provide sort of the foundational knowledge uh, and skills for our students. But learning by doing is still one of the key components of a full uh, educational experience. So in, in the higher ed language, we call that experiential learning. And it includes things like study abroad, undergraduate research, service learning, community-based learning, internships, apprenticeships, and these kinds of experiences. Uh, I'm a huge fan of experiential learning. Of course, you know, I, my, my field is Spanish language and literature. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the uh, study abroad and service learning uh, landscape. Um, you know, uh, service learning, I think, is probably... Uh, service learning and internships are probably the two categories where, um, you know, LAS students can really help meet alumni needs, right? Because the idea there with both service learning and, inter and apprenticeships, uh, internships, is that there's a, a, it's mutually beneficial to the student and to the, the group, the organization, right? Study abroad is mostly just about the students learning, right? But when, with service learning and internships, um, it's uh, the, the student learns and the organization actually gets benefit, you know, from the work of the student. Um, so there are all kinds of, um, you know, one, one of the first things I've really been trying to do as a dean is actually meet people in the community, right? Um, because I'm not from here. And so trying to reach out to meet uh, leaders in the community, whether they're in governmental agencies, you know, healthcare industry, um, you know, the private sector, you know, public service, et cetera, um, nonprofit, did I say that already? Um, so, uh, and I think one of the things that people forget out in the world, right, is that 
uh, a lot of times you think you need a specific professional student, like a computer scientist or maybe a business student. Uh, and, they, and people don't always think about the liberal arts majors that are out there and the skills that they provide. So um, a liberal arts degree, you know, yes, you're going to specialize in a particular discipline and maybe it's psychology or sociology or philosophy or history or biology. Um, but every one of those programs that, that we have in LAS provides a, a critical foundation of transferable skills that can be used in any field, in any discipline, in any kind of industry. So we're talking about oral, effective oral and written communication. We're talking about quantitative literacy. We're talking about critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, these kinds of things. And it doesn't actually matter, like you can be a Spanish major or you can be a history major or a physics major, and you have all of those skills. They can be used um, and leveraged by you uh, in any industry, whether that's healthcare or, or whether that's the nonprofit sector or, or government uh, or whatever. So um, one of the things you can do is call me, right? Send me an email uh, and we can help, you know, if you have uh, internship needs, uh, or you have a service project that, that needs to be done that you think could be done by, uh, you know, upper level undergraduates, uh, give me a call and I will partner you with, uh, you know, a particular program or a particular group of students. And we can, uh, you know, partner on these kinds of things because it's not only beneficial for you, it's also beneficial for our students. Well, I know it's very easy to get in touch with you. All you really need to do is Google UCCS Vibler LAS and and you're right at the top of the search. So I know you're easy to find if you want to reach the Dean. A quick question on that. Are these kinds of experiences outside the classroom possible now, given the, the pandemic? How have you and the, the college adjusted for that? That's a great question. So probably the, the one experience that really has suffered a lot is study abroad, right? Um, that people, Americans can't really leave the country right now. There's a lot of, most countries are not letting Americans in. So so that's been pretty sad. Um, the internships and uh, those kinds of things are, we are basically having the students follow the rule of the organization. So if the organization itself is, uh, you know, working in person, you know, with socially distanced, masking, whatever, uh, then we are permitting the student to continue with that experience. Um, if, of course, the organization is 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 canceling those experiences, then you know that's basically what's happening. A lot, a lot of organ just just like us, a lot of organizations out there are finding ways to to get to get the work done. Right, you know, through uh, virtual communication, um, you know, working remotely, working from home. Uh, there's a lot of things that can still happen. What I know to be true of our students is that they are highly adaptable and they have adjusted to this new way of doing things and they will they will and they do every day step up and find find ways to get that done. So I, I know they'll do it now if they want to connect with an alumnus in the community. It's true. And people are to feel more and more comfortable, you know, with the with the environment. And I guess I should say, and you you might want to correct me, but no longer are these experiences limited to the Colorado Springs area. Virtual experiences outside the classroom can happen anywhere. That's right. That's absolutely true. And so, I mean, it's it's one of the you know we uh, we had Cornell West speak you know a couple of weeks ago, and and it, before that was kind of an impossible thing, but now it's like oh well, it's a virtual, so you know we don't have to pay for travel. So let's 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 aim big, right? Um, you know, students have that same opportunity. You know, they can look all over the place, all over the world, really, um, and and be able to work virtually. Uh, without actually having to travel. So it has opened our minds, you know, to, 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 to bigger possibilities. Yep. Well, we kind of covered question number three, but I'll, I'll let you uh, answer this again. What are the ways that alumni can connect with you? Yeah, okay, so I will tell you also, you can also email lasdean at uccs.edu, so you don't even have to remember my name. 
lasdean at uccs.edu. Uh, I would love to, to chat with you. Uh, I want to find out, you know, how LA, your experience in LAS has informed your, your personal and professional lives. Uh, those stories are really exciting to me. Um, and again, you know, if you're interested in, you know, communicating with uh, your former department, um, you know, we would love to, um, e even if you don't have necessarily a job for a student, uh, to be able to kind of quote you and, and uh, um, you know, hear your story. Uh, those are really helpful for our students to hear that, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, if, you know, mom and dad want to know what are you going to do with that? You know, like you can tell us what you're doing with that, right? Yeah. Um, and remember that you're using, you might think, oh, well, I was a philosophy major, but I'm not actually like using my degree. But you are because you're writing, you're, um, you're speaking, you are thinking critically, you're problem solving and all of those things, those foundational skills that I talked about before. Um, you know, the other way you can connect with us too is, you know, we, we want, I, I really view the university as a developmental organization. Now that sounds really obvious, right? We develop our students, we develop our junior tenure track faculty, um, but you know, why shouldn't the university be there for everyone's development, right? Staff, alumni, community members, you know, all of the, uh, many of the activities that we have are, you know, public lectures, you know, you're al always welcome to attend, especially virtually, uh, the End Center for the Arts, you know, of course, athletics, like all of these things, um, you know, are, are open to the, to the community. Um, in addition, of course, you know, we also have all kinds of um, sort of mini credentials now, certificates that they're not minors, they're not majors, they're smaller than that, right? And they're really perfect for, um, you know, kind of re-upping, accelerating, updating your career. Your career. Um, so we have all sorts, undergraduate and graduate certificates. Uh, if you find yourself uh, suddenly in a, a diverse environment and you want, uh, you know, a better understanding of what's happening in that space, we have certificates in global studies and disability studies, the sociology of diversity. Um, you know, if you're looking to improve your communication skills, we have certificates in professional and technical writing, in communication. Um, uh, we also have a new uh, a new certificate that's coming online very soon. The, that's data analytics for the liberal arts. And what that means, it's not the programming piece, it's the storytelling piece, right? How to read and analyze the data that's pulled um, and to, to, to tell the story, to, to analyze that data and, and to communicate that out. Uh, geographic and information science is another uh, certificate that we have. And of course, graduate programs, just regular graduate degrees, communication, psychology, sociology, history, um, all, all in a master of sciences. Like we have all kinds of ways in which you could, from an academic side, you know, come back and uh, either sort of pivot or uh, re-up, you know, uh, your, your career. We have a great comment from an alumna in the chat. I, I'm going to read to you. Okay. She says, I love hearing about the vast components of a liberal arts degree that lead to broad career applications in the future. She says, I have found that to be the case with my philosophy degree. Well done, LAS. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. That's a, that's a great testimony. Um, uh, I might ask you if we could use that <laughs> on the website or something, but, but that's really exactly what I'm talking about. You know, um, you might think, um, that uh, people, well, people sometimes make fun of philosophy. Like, well, what are you going to be a philosopher? You know, it's like, well, yes. I mean, as as a human, we are, you know, it's it's a it's we are always thinking about things and wondering why things are. But all of the skills, like the practice of philosophy, is really about reading, analysis, resource uh, evaluation writing, thinking critically, problem solving, and all of those skills are applicable to literally anything that you might do in your life. All right, I'm gonna do a quick time check here. We have 10 minutes and okay. two more questions and we wanna leave time for a Q&A. So okay. here's, my, here's my favorite question, you ready? Yeah. Tell us a bit more about yourself and how you arrived here at UCCS. Oh my gosh, okay, this is kind of an interesting story. So I, um, I actually, my first job after I got my PhD 
was at West Point. I taught uh, as a civilian professor at the U.S. Military Academy um, for 12 years. And, you know, I, I always knew I wanted to, um, to teach. I didn't actually really care what it was. It turned out to be Spanish. Um, that, that was my field. But I loved that you could, um, you could, I actually started teaching ballet. That's, you know, another piece of it. But like, I always loved that you could say something, like words would come out of your mouth. And then a person could do something that they couldn't do before, or they could say something that they couldn't say before in another language. And that was just so satisfying to me. But when I went to West Point, uh, and of course, you know, like the Air Force Academy up the hill, um, you know, uh, dedicated to um, to the development of officers and leader and character development, um, I became very fascinated by the idea that you could, as a leader, um, also develop and inspire whole teams and organizations. Um, and so that's how I got involved in academic administration. Uh, of course, as, as a civilian at West Point anyway, um, you can't actually be a department chair or hold an administrative position there. So I had to leave. I ended up you know, finding a position at, at the University of South Dakota as a department chair and then associate dean. And, and now um, I'm really, really excited to have my first dean position. Thank you. We're really glad you're here. All right, our last question, and then we'll, I'm checking the time. We'll leave just enough time for some questions. Okay. Um, now that we are many months into this pandemic, uh, many, some of us have picked up new hobbies or <laughs> new things to do. Tell us about some hobbies that you have started or maintained or really um, you know, really become even more passionate about during this time when you're not working. Okay. So, um, I am a photographer and that, that's my, that is my side hobby. Um, I've been shooting for a really long time since I was a kid. My dad had a dark room in his house, um, and, you know, taught me sort of all the basics and, um, you know, eventually transitioned to digital. Um, I do, uh, a weekly photo challenge. Um, and it's, it's an online photo challenge. Every week they release a, a, a prompt or, or, or a challenge. And, um, and you have to, you only have seven days. You have, you can't submit an old picture. You have to take it within the seven days and it's due on Sunday night mountain time. It's 10 o'clock. So 10 o'clock on Sunday night, uh, you have to upload your picture and, and then, you know, you get, uh, constructive feedback and, you know, you comment on other people's pictures and it's this whole uh, like really nice online community. Um, and that's something that I've, I've continued. I haven't yet missed a week, even in the move and even in the pandemic and starting the new job and everything. Um, I have also published, uh, and, uh, exhibited, you know, my photography, um, in the past, although right now I'm kind of just focusing on trying to, the whole point is just to be consistent right? That not every week is going to be a great shot, but that, that you thought about it this week and that you did something. And so it's that, that consistency of creativity that I'm, you know, trying to work on right now. Um, but it's been fantastic, you know, being in Colorado. And of course the, for five weeks, probably every week was about, was garden of the gods or something like that. I think. Um, but, but, uh, but I'm having a great time with it and I learn something every week. So. That's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, even those of us who have lived in Colorado Springs a long time still are awestruck by Garden of the Gods. So it is amazing. I hope that's true for you years uh -huh. from now. All right, let's go to a few questions. Uh, this one might be near and dear to your heart. Okay. Uh, are there any hopes of LAS offering a master's in Spanish? Oh my God. Oh, my, my heart just melted. Um, I don't know. That's a great question. I think, you know, one of the things that, um, uh, that we're really looking at right now. Of course, right now we're in the, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and there's you know budgetary issues and change in leadership, and um, all kinds of things going on. So you know we're, we're we're trying our best right now just to kind of make sure that the students get everything that they need and our researchers are getting what they need. Um, that said, you know we are definitely trying to look towards the future for um, innovative and programs that are needed by the community. I think one of the um, great things about, um, about foreign language, right, is that you, you still have all those transferable skills 
except now you're communicating effectively orally and written in, in another language, right? So you've expanded your, um, the, the, your ability to communicate with you know, hundreds of millions more people than you could before, and you can still do it in any, um, in any industry. Um, so the master's degree, you know, in Spanish gives you uh, increased language proficiency, right? Because not everybody that starts in a Spanish major is a native speaker, right? So you have a mix of, of people doing that. So increased increased proficiency, you obviously get uh, uh, with any master's degree, uh, Spanish or otherwise, you get an increased ability to research, right? Um, and that's useful for all kinds of, uh, you know, just ability to, to find resources, to evaluate resources, to synthesize information, um, and, and bring your own analysis and an original opinion to the, to the question. Um, so that, that's, um, that's what a master's degree helps you begin to do. Um, and then you get to do it in another language. So, um, you know, I'm in favor, you know, I, I, <laughs> Um, I, I don't know, you know, curriculum doesn't come from the dean, curriculum comes from the faculty. So it's really about what the faculty are interested and prepared to do um, as part of their strategic vision for their program moving forward. But I encourage you to reach out to the chair of the department. Now, or reach out to you and you can connect. Or me. And I can connect you, that's right, lasdean at uccs.edu, yeah. One of the things that struck me when you started at this campus was you sent a welcome email and video to the campus and you did that in both English and Spanish and it was so beautiful and meaningful. How, how did you decide to do that? Um, you know, I one of the things that being multilingual brings is that it, it allows you, like I said, to communicate with uh, just many more people than you could before. Uh, the Hispanic population in Colorado, I mean, Colorado has um, you know, a, uh, an incredibly important, you know, history um, for the Hispanic community. Um, and, uh, you know, this was, you know, I have a communications advisor, you know, in my, in my, on my staff, uh, Margie, who's amazing. Shout out to Margie. Uh, and this is something that we talked about. This is actually her idea. She said, hey, you should, you should do that. Um, and really that message was, was about in inclusion and belonging. Um, so, you know, those, so just kind of bring, bringing that all together, uh, I thought I thought was important just to be able to reach more people. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I have one more question. We have more questions, but we'll get to one more. And then I want you to have a minute or two for any last thoughts. Before okay. we sign. And again, I want to thank you, Dean Bidler. Um, uh, I from the alumni office. I'm again, I'm Joanna being the director and from our office to you and to the Alumni and Friends Association, thank you for doing this. Let me ask one more question and then feel free to, to give some closing thoughts also. Sure. Uh, what has been the biggest surprise about moving to Colorado and to UCCS for you? Huh, that's interesting. You know, I've, I've moved around a lot. Um, some of that is because of the nature of my discipline, right? I've traveled. Every, not everywhere. I've traveled a lot of places. I've lived a lot of places. Um, so uh, one of the things that doesn't surprise me is that there are things that surprise you, right? Um, that everywhere you go, uh, even in the United States, I mean, the United States is really, really big, right? I mean, I've lived in New York. I've lived in California. I've lived in Massachusetts. I've lived in Montana. I've lived in South Dakota, right? Um, I have family in, in Florida and, and um so I've, I've been a lot of places and, of course, traveled for conferences and whatnot. And, um, you know, every every region, every community has uh, its own character, its own perspective on the world, its own flavors, its own, you know, quality of light, which I find interesting as a photographer. Just, you know, it looks different here. Right. Because we're just closer to 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 the sky. Right. And um, so. I don't know that, uh, I mean, it's, I grew up in California, so it's, um, it's, it's obviously Western, right? It's, it's sort of, of all those other places that I mentioned, you know, it's kind of like the farthest West back towards California. So, so it's, it's actually very familiar to me um, in, in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know, surprise. I think I'm just, I, I tell you some things that make me really happy about it. 
um, you know, uh, I, I'm really happy to be back in a place that has a wide variety of food options. Um, is that saying that nicely? I'm trying to say that nicely. And, um, and of course, the sunshine that really makes me happy. You know, I lived in, in, in the Northeast for a long time and the winter is very gray um, and uh, humid. And here it's a lot sunnier and not so humid. So that that makes me happy. And, and the people have been just really fantastic. That's great. Any thoughts you want to share here as we wrap up today? Well, I just I, I want to um, just really, you know, speaking to the alumni that are on this call, you should be so proud of your campus, whether you were at LAS or not. Uh, UCCS is an amazing, amazing university and it's grown, you know, from its um, just humble beginnings you know, to the beautiful campus that we have now and the amazing initiatives and public-private partnerships uh, with the Hibble Center now and, and the End Center. Um, and, you know, it's competitive in athletics and the research that's coming out of here is top quality. Um, and, you know, students can come here and they don't have to go to a giant campus like Boulder, right? Um, if that's what they're interested in, that's fine. Boulder has all kinds of great opportunities. But we are still, you know, we still have that spirit of, um, you know, care and concern and personal attention. Um, you know, even though we've grown, you know, since 1965 or whatever it is, right, uh, we still have that spirit. Um, and they're still getting a fantastic education. So, you know, please keep in touch with us. We really do want to hear, um, you know, if you think, uh, my daughter, I'll tell you just a quick story. My daughter was a music major, music and Spanish double major at the University of South Dakota. And a, an, an acquaintance asked her one day, and your parents are okay with that? That she studied music. And she, she turned to them and she said, well, you know, um, my parents, uh, one was a ballet dancer and one was a magician. So I don't think they have a choice, right? So that's actually a true story that, you know, we were happy, but there's a lot of parents who aren't necessarily happy that they might, somebody might be majoring um, in, uh, sometimes it's usually one of our LAS majors, you know, it might be the arts, uh, fine and performing arts, you know, it might be uh, humanities, you know, in English, you might, and want to have a student who wants to be an English major. And, uh, you know, it really is, it takes, if we could just get one quote from you about how your communication skills, your uh, problem solving and critical thinking, um, how your quantitative literacy, your teamwork abilities have uh, shaped your career, um, that would just be a huge, huge help to us to help showcase some of our programs and some of our students. And if you're not really sure, um, you know, take me up on this, call me and I'll, I'll par pair you up with a student intern or somebody doing a, a service uh, learning project and you'll see what they can do. Our students are amazing and you know that because you are amazing as well. So I'll leave you with that, that little challenge and plea. Thank you, that's a, that's a wonderful, a wonderful place for us to end. I'm just checking the chat one more time. We had someone who says, so very glad UCCS has you now on the team. This has been really dynamic and heartful. And I would agree. What a, what a great way to end. Thank you, Dean Vidler. Thanks Thank to all of us today and have a great afternoon. Thanks everybody.